I would like to say thank you to Patchworks for their continued support of the show. Um, not just modular gear, not just synthesizer gear. We've got a lot of, well, we've, they've got a lot of really, really great uh, studio stuff. So if you are trying to build your own small home studio or even build out a pretty uh, substantially sized home studio, they've got you covered. So please go visit patchworks.com, P-A-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.com. You can check out all the amazing um, synth stuff they have, Eurorack stuff. They carry foreign mess. I mean, they carry everything. Make noise, schlappy, after later audio, recovery effects, uh, Qubit. They've got it all. They even got some Buchla stuff in there. Um, a lot of cool groove boxes. You know the deal. So once again, patchworks.com, P-A-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.com. Hello and welcome back to Podular Modcast. This week, Jamie Liddell returns to the show and we have an excellent conversation. We even do some uh, live patching. Well, Jamie does. Um, and we get a pretty awesome uh, little uh, rundown of this intensely elaborate patch that he, uh, that he has built. So look forward to that. Um, but before we get into that, I want to take a moment to talk about the Patreon. Thank you if you have recently subscribed, or if you've subscribed in the past, or if you're a longtime subscriber. Um, I've been saying for the last two years that my goal has been to get to 200 Patreon supporters. But over the past, you know, five years, it's, it's you know, it kind of got to a, a certain point, and it's just stayed in this state of stasis where people come and go. Um, and, you know, admittedly, I haven't done a whole lot of bonus material or anything for the patreon so i am trying to beef that up so keep in mind that the last few episodes have um, bonus portions of the episode that are only available to the patreon subscribers um and yeah we're going to have one with with jamie today uh he's actually going to give us a little singing lesson so i'm really excited about that um but yeah i'm also going to be passing along some uh some gear that i don't really use anymore to some to some Patreon subscribers. Um, it's not gonna be a contest, so you don't have to do anything to like enter to win. I'm just gonna randomly post at some point in the near future, hey, I've got all this stuff. Tell, tell me which which uh, little package you want. I'm gonna divide it all up and uh, it's gonna be first come, first serve. Got some modules, patch cables, cassette tapes, um, stickers, all sorts of fun stuff. So yeah, let's, let's truly make 2023 the year that I do get to 200 Patreon subscribers. Uh, so if you would like to help out, uh, head over to patreon.com forward slash podular modcast. I also want to say thank you to Novation. I'm loving my Summit. It is such a cool synth, and I'm actually going to build my own uh, multi-voice on it in today's episode. So here's a little preview of the voice we are going to check out momentarily. Really, really fun. But anyways, I digress. I also want to say thank you to 4MS for their support of the show. Please visit them online. Uh, link in the show description. You know I'm loving that shaped dual envelope VCA. Um, and I, I'm just currently trying to wrap my head around how to best use the, uh, the new shuffling clock multiplier. Super, super cool module. Um, they've also got a, a mini version of the pingable envelope generator out and a couple other um, really nice envelope VCA modules. Um, so yeah, if you would like to learn more about those, please go uh, hit the link in the show description to check out their cool stuff. I've also I picked up uh, two pods recently, the little powered pods, and you can daisy chain them together. And I've actually learned recently that I can power either my Soma Enter or my Make Noise uh, Strega with just one power outlet or my battery, my Max Oak USB battery. So be on the lookout for some really cool uh, remote performances with those. Once again, I also want to say thank you to everybody who has uh, supported my, my mom's GoFundMe page. Uh, as you know, if you've been listening to uh, the show for the last few weeks, she's been in the hospital since early December. So yeah, it's been a long time, but I did get to actually have a lucid conversation with her the other day, which was really nice. So she's, she's definitely 
getting better. And she's, I told her about how so many people from the synth community donated to her GoFundMe and she just, she can't believe it. Um, so I, I'm hoping, hoping once she's all uh, healed up, I can bring her on, on the show to uh, personally thank you guys. Um, I got to play her the Christmas song that I made for her finally, even though it's past Christmas. Um, and she actually uh, let me know today that she she's wanting to hear it again. So that's really sweet. Um, I'll put a link in the show description to that GoFundMe because she's been in the ICU for over two months and I'm not sure what the insurance is gonna cover and I'm pretty sure that bill is gonna be hefty. So if you would like to help out there, you can. Okay, and the final order of business is if you could be so kind as to hit the subscribe button uh, here on YouTube, if that's how you're ingesting your Podular Modcast, that would mean a whole heck of a lot to me. I hate to even say stuff like this, but it's part of the business, and I don't even need to tell you this last part, And but you know me. This is how I do things. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for coming back to Podular Modcast. Let's check out a little demo on the Novation Summit and then get into our chat with Jamie Liddell. All right, I'm going to show you how to uh, build a brand new voice on the multi side of the Novation Summit. Super, super easy um, navigation of all the controls and a lot of really cool features. Um, so just to start out, we have our A and B voices here. Um, we can layer those, we can split them, or we can do dual. So layered. This is just the initial patch here. Um, so. Let's do a dual really quick. So that means if I'm on the A side, we'll only listen to the A voice and then go to the B. And then split, we got A over here, B there. But let's just do dual for building the voice so we can just listen to one at a time. What I like to do is turn down oscillators two and three. So here's your mixer. Um, so there's oscillator one. Here we have our waveforms sine, triangle, ramp, square. And then if you go to this more section, that's where you can go into kind of this bank of wave shapes. So that's what I like to do. So we have a sine. Um, so also all sorts of cool sounds. Let's do, let's do some yeah voices um, for oscillator one. I also, because this is gonna be the A voice and when I play it in split, I'm gonna want it to be kind of my bass. I'm gonna bring it down to the lowest octave range. All right, I really like that. And then we have an FM here. So this, you can modulate oscillator one from oscillator three, and then oscillator one can modulate oscillator two, and then two can do three. So I'm happy with this so far for voice one. So let's now go to our voice, our oscillator two voice. Um, gonna go up, so I'm gonna keep that at the eight octave range here. Um, so it's a little higher. Let's choose a cool waveform. Yeah, and I like that. So let's mess with our shape. Now we can do some FM. So once again, manually. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Mod. And your envelope. There you go, the LFO. Oh, that's kind of cool. So let's listen to it with uh, oscillator one now. Cool. Okay, now let's get to oscillator three. Now let's do some sh uh, wave shaping here. Okay, I like that. So let's do the mod envelope to bring that down a little bit. Actually, I don't want that. I want LFO one. And now we can use oscillator two to do some FM. <laughs> it's a little intense. That's kind of cool. Oh, wow. I 
I like that. And then um, Oscillator 3 has uh, a noise option. So that's pretty nice. So our filter here, we're, um, the, uh, is being controlled by LFO 1. So here you can control the depth of the, uh, the LFO here on the filter. And then you can also use Oscillator 3 to um, modulate the filter. Okay, now I have the first part of my cool new voice, but there's a whole other side, so let's do that now. Same process. I'm gonna do this probably quicker and cut a lot of this part out. All right, so now I'm at uh, a point where I feel pretty good about this, so let's just uh, let's play a little ditty on it. So that's split mode here, um, and then uh, layered is also really fun. Yeah, man. So, well, hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to yeah. uh, to chat with you again. It's been about a, a little over a year and a half since you were on last, and I figured... Is that right? My fucking yeah. God, it feels like so long. Yeah, well, <laughs> it feels really long to me because I was, uh, I was still in my apartment in Seattle, and my wife and I bought a house uh, in Tacoma, um, and it was a year in November. So this whole upstairs bedroom here is my my studio slash workspace so um yeah I, i'm just loving it it's but you know it's it's i've rearranged it seven times since i've been in here and last night <sighs> i'm going through the internet looking for the perfect uh you know like keyboard stand versus desk uh because right now i've actually had to set set a keyboard stand up for my laptop and interface because i figured <laughs> it's right. a lot cooler to have the the fucking modular shit behind me than just a wall, you know? So, yeah. You know, but, there you go. Uh, yeah. There is, oh, oh, I know. See, they, that is something I really admire about people who make it all look so beautiful in video <laughs> form. You know, I've, I, I've worked on this patch. I've got a patch up at the moment. I've worked on it for, man, I've, I don't know how long I've worked on it. Maybe a month. Okay. It's like, it's, it's an epic. It's like mm -hmm. what, the most <laughs> epic patch. Well, I made this polysynth and that was on a par. Okay. Um, wow. Are you playing this with is, keys? Yeah, or? Is, yeah, I've got, um, ooh, this is quite hard, isn't it, to explain. I mean, I could <laughs> just show it. Should I just show it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Holy to, shit, to, man. Uh, yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a beast because, you see, it's mostly focused, it's mostly focused around the, um, the two, the droid, right? What, yeah, what, uh, what the, is the droid? The, I'm not. It's basically that motorized fader system. Okay, okay, yeah, I was wondering what that was. That's, oh, wow, holy shit. And that's a Euro module? Yeah, each module is a bank of four faders. Oh, very cool. Okay. And they're they're really pricey. Uh but they're I bet. really well made. 
They're, they're yeah. tremendously well made. In fact, the whole ecosystem is, yeah, it's really, it's really, uh, it's not perfect, but it's it's very useful for me because I come from that background of making loopers in Max MSP, mm-hmm. kind of negotiating all of the awkwardness between your idea, mm-hmm. you know, totally, and yeah. all of the parameters, especially with loopers, because this is essentially just a big looper. Mm-hmm. So, What's going on uh, with that tablet? That is running the loopy software. Okay. Um, okay. And the thing of the droid can actually do MIDI as well as CV. Right. So okay, I'm cool. actually controlling loopy with the faders and the buttons. Oh, okay. So I can use, yeah, and uh, there's visual feedback from the looper on the buttons. And yeah, it's, it, it's, it's quite cumbersome to explain, but essentially I've, I used to use this looper that was made by Tim Exile back in the day. And uh, it was such a good looper. He built it in Reactor. And uh, it's called the Flow Machine. And really the thing about it that I love so much was the faders. Because mm-hmm. when you're making a sound, and I, ca- I really use the same scheme for this looper, like you start with a high pass filter and then it's resonance and then you have the low pass filter and it's resonance. And then you go into like a reverb and it's the herb verb next with its own four faders. You got a wet and dry, then you've got the size and you've got a couple of other parameters and then it moves on to the mimeophone and there's buttons underneath all the faders. So I can turn the clock send to the mimeophone or not. And then, you know, change the wet and dry, change the, the speed. And then if it's in a very short mode and I take the clock off, I can run a a rampage through it and it will Mm -hmm. suddenly become, it will take control over the, um, the time. So you get like, uh, if you put the feedback up, you get a crazy flanger, uh, you know? Yeah. And just sort of, and then there's an ER301 at the end of it, which is basically like recording the whole input the whole time and you can just freeze it and scan through it. Mm -hmm. And then all of that goes into the looper. And then the looper has its own page with all the volumes of all the tracks. And then if they have a high and low pass filter, which I sort of did DJ style. So if it crosses the midline of the fader, then it, you know, starts to be a high pass and all that. And then uh, the good no, the good thing about the faders is once you're done, and this is what happened with Tim Axel's looper. One of the big problems with looping is you do all this stuff and once you've stopped recording it carries on making sound you know and it like Mm -hmm. throws that into the loop or it goes over the loop you've made so like having like hard resets for everything with the faders is so cool because you can literally i can go crazy with the faders push it right into reverb do the mad flanging and just kind of like start to to mess it up and then press one button and all the faders slam back down and then you you're right back at the start again yeah. And you can see it, you know? Yeah. And it's just yeah, that yeah. stupid sort of ape-like thing of like, what's happening with this? <laughs> how would you do that any other way? You know, you right. could use like the poly M preset or something like that, but it's just not faders, you know? It's faders. Mm-hmm. Faders are so cool. Everyone knows faders are the way you can get m- most fingers on control and really like and just dreaming up stuff like i just can't i keep thinking of new ideas to do with the droid you know and this whole uh-huh. way of thinking if only it wasn't so expensive i mean i'll just get a whole yeah. other one and have it to control <laughs> other stuff because uh-huh. i got one of those um do you know l1 the company l1 i think that so makes what it- like it's kind of like um uh they make really high quality kind of VCAs and mixers okay. and ADSRs. And they also make this voltage controlled resonant EQ, which is like oh, wow. four of these EQs and they all kind of pass into one another. Oh, and, cool. Yeah, and it's super fun to sort of craft the sound because you can, uh, you know, you can find these sweet spots and you can really push like resonance of one into another and, and so on. How and, many but, bands and I was thinking, does that have like, on it? It's four. Four bands, okay. Four bands, like with bandwidth, frequency, and level, and then a master, and a master control as well. It it really needs a lot of CV to really make it animate. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and I was thinking, oh man, this would be so cool with the droid where you just had all of that on faders. The limit of the droid system currently, and it's been a pain in my ass a little bit, is it only has eight CV outs. Mm. So really, for my system, I need a lot more. So I ended up buying this thing called by a company called Flame, which is basically a MIDI CC to CV converter. Mm -hmm. But the downside is it's 7-bit MIDI and it's 0 to 5 volts output. And a lot of the make noise stuff, it needs 8 volts, you know what I mean? It yeah. needs a little bit more than 5. So I've had to use like... That's one thing that pisses me off about Eurorack, I'll be honest. <laughs> it's just like just negotiating with a module every time you need to do something like i just need a bit more signal level out of this thing yeah totally so i was just of course re I need a booster. That. yeah Man, I, like I was <laughs> i was that so i've got a v drum set and um i actually just had uh the last or the week before last uh i had uh john mcintyre from tortoise and uh sam oh, amazing from the cnk Ooh. they were in my they were in this room so with me. Cool. it was cool amazing. yeah it was pretty surreal yeah. i've been a fan of both of those bands for so long um yeah. but we were talking Likewise. about his drum his drum setup and uh i was saying like yeah i want to find a way to trigger my modules with my v drum pads but i think they need to be powered or because they have trs cables <laughs> so i thought the brain powered them and he's like you should you should just try it and now i i did and i can run every just unpowered straight into the trig in so yeah. i set up like a patch bay so it can go to the brain, so I can still use the brain and then plug it into whatever module What's I want. The oh, the brain of the of the just my old drums, yeah. The, yeah. It's like a ninety nine V Rollins. drum. It's yeah, um, yeah. But I found that uh, you know because you can adjust the velocity and everything on the brain. Well, you can't really do that straight from the pad to the. Uh, and I was finding that some of the on on, even off. on the same module. I was actually thinking of you with this module the other day um, <laughs> when I was listening to your Red Means recording um episode but i have this drum module from uh, a company in portland called weston precision audio and they do a little uh all analog 808 drum machine so it's got all the eight sounds from that and um it's pretty simple but it sounds really cool but i was finding that the hi-hat like it it won't like i'd have to smash <laughs> it to trigger it so i actually yeah. use this thing that we have uh, that after later audio has called the blend where you can sum your channels one and two and like turn them up so i just added a but like dialed in my voltage for what i needed but then i'm like do i want to have like eight blends just for turning up voltages so i gotta i want to find a better solution so hang but on, yeah what's that's the issue? just your triggers are either on or off or do they have some voltage range I it's like it seems it was more about the input of the drum so like the kick drum would I was yeah, you know sending right, to the right, kick right. and that was triggering the snare was triggering but for some yeah. and all the symbols but for some reason the hi hat and I even tried other other <laughs> triggers um but for some reason yeah. the trig in on that hi hat needs a lot more juice and I don't you know it's just you one know of those what's things what's good do you have a frap tools 321 no, I don't have any of their stuff, but I would like to. Yeah, that's nice good stuff. because it's three amplifiers, okay. which is quite rare to find. So you can, obviously, you can get the dirt for amplifier, but that's just one amp mm -hmm. you'll get for that. So the 321 is good. Okay. Uh, that's good. I'll, yeah, I'll, I recommend that. that. It does tank. your usual, yeah, attenuation and all that kind of nonsense, but it will give you boost as well, which is it's just harder to find, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Actual yeah. boost. So I think I can't remember how much it gives you, but it gives you enough to really change the signal. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. I know all of those small things, and it's just like in software. Of course, when I used to build stuff in Max MSP, that was just a question of you know you put a number box in, and it mm -hmm. or you put a, like a you know a multiplier <laughs> box, and you're right, done. Right. Yeah. But in Eurorec, you need an actual module for that, which right. really starts to make you think, oh, this is actually really ridiculous. And in a way, it sort of shows you when you when you work with a droid a little bit, the droid is kind of like a hybrid between, well, it's not hybrid. It's, it is, um, you program it with this thing called Droid Forge, okay. uh, which is, it was actually really clever stuff because initially when the droid thing came out, it was just a text editor that you had to use to oh. tell it what to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, which was, you know, to Mateus's credit, 
you know, their man, their machine, the guy who does <coughs> those modules, it was still really easy to understand, you know. Mm-hmm. You address the LFO module and then you tell it from a series of commands what to do and then out it comes. Mm-hmm. But yeah, now the Droid 4 just basically editing that text file for you but with a with a graphical GUI and once you get your head around that kind of scheme it's pretty powerful you know you can do mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff with button groups you can you can yeah like make the faders like on this thing when you saw those faders jumping what that's doing is it's changing what the output of all the faders is going to be Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. 16 different outputs suddenly changing to an entirely different bank of 16 outputs. You know? Wow. So and if you did God, have a... 32 CV outs, you would be able to access 32 different things from that. And you could see it all the time and recall it and store presets and visually see them. It's super, super powerful. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I, I found, well, this is like a very, very simplified and art more arduous way of doing kind of what you've figured out with that mm, droid mm-hmm. but you know i just like i have a, a dpw uh you know yeah two two channel switch <coughs> um and then there's this module right. by um uh mystic circuits it's a, actually an expander for one of their modules for the tree and leaves and the leaves is just like a stepped voltage generator and it's on nice faders so you know just like put huh. a, you know the different values of those faders into um into a switch you know so you're switching between the values but then you have to like clock it and make sure that when the switch hits you got to like multiply it multiply that into the the input for the steps to advance you know so it's just like classic modular like yeah you can do it that way but (laughs) i know isn't it crazy i mean i think yeah yeah i mean it's true i i mean i having done all of this inside max and having seen tim's reactor patch there are some things which definitely are more sensible to do in software there's no question oh for sure yeah i find myself thing should be done in software, quite frankly. Totally. I find myself thinking that almost like, well, I just got yeah. this Novation Summit and I'm sitting down like building, you know, building voices on that and playing music. And it's just like, oh, what I just made on this and recorded all within an hour and a half, this would have been like a whole day of putting, you oh, know, yeah. unpatching, patching. And sometimes I find myself like, why am I into this at all? But then when you finally get to one of those, yes magical zones you're like well this is why because oh, you can't really do th- like this is yeah it's just i was just amazing. saying to my wife i've spent i mean this is really like my raymond scott style <laughs> endeavor you know i'm a big raymond scott fan i mean although this is not anywhere near his level because he was actually building <laughs> from the ground up the entire mm-hmm. machine this is definitely like one of the things i i wanted to do like um Maybe, I don't know, I'm just talking about this because I, I feel like this gives you a window into like where my <laughs> obsessions lead me. Uh, uh-huh. I don't know, maybe it's interesting, maybe it's not. I, it, I mean, one thing's for sure, I would recommend anyone who's into like seeing what they're doing to at least look at that droid thing because it's not that hard to really learn what what everything does, although it could be easier, quite frankly. But at the, at the end of the day, just like with Max or with Reactor, it is complicated what it's doing, you know? Totally, yeah. So you can't just mm-hmm. go, oh, it should be really easy, but it, it's as easy as it can be almost. It's uh, So you, right. you have to be prepared to sort of put your thinking cap on a bit and go, what am I trying to do here? Mm-hmm. Like, um, mm-hmm. you know, and then if you really just break down the problem, this is something that I, I think if you're into modular, it's good for you if really if you like to solve problems, quite frankly. Totally. It's, yeah, you know, it's I'm like starting a to understand yeah. that that's good for my brain. I, I mean, we've come to understand that our whole family is autistic, you know. I yeah. am autistic and I'm more than happy to just share that. I'm not going to say I have an autistic spectrum disorder. I'm not going to use the word disorder. Mm-hmm. It is a positive as far as I'm concerned if I allow myself to embrace what it is that regulates me and that like makes me happy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And one of the things I've done consistently is this obsessive focusing on some crazy task like this. Mm-hmm. When I made my looper in Max MSP, it was very similar. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I just would went down incredible rabbit holes to achieve these things. Sometimes it literally is. I see it with climbers because my son's really into climbing. Like, uh, and like climbers, like that guy Sean Rabatou, who's like you know an incredible boulder. He does all the hardest boulders. And like, there's this beautiful bit of video I saw of him recently where he was like, "To be honest, it's just like I, it's just working on the problem is is better than finishing it to me." To be honest, I I. <laughs> you know? I totally agree with that like i, I make yeah. less music than i used to pre-modular because i'm spending more time <laughs> yeah. either tar- right. you know, building the perfect case or whatever or building a patch um but right. you know it's it's kind of like the zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance thing like you know yes, like becoming the go. task right. and the task is the thing um yeah can i ask you a question I, a, a, a yeah. question about the where, where you was that a recent discovery uh, that Rel- the, the- relatively recent yeah okay. i mean our son was more obvious i suppose uh in that he has sort of like stimming behavior and stuff um which mm-hmm. is more visually obvious you know pe- mm-hmm. uh, people know about autism a little bit stimming is like the a regulatory regulatory behavior uh mm-hmm. sometimes yeah it can be a flapping of the arms uh, in my case as i've come to understand it has always been singing funnily oh enough. wow and I've realized okay. that's how I've used it. I've talked about it in interviews before. I never really thought that it's my way of regulating. Wow. And I always was okay. confused why when I used to go and visit my dad, like I was always really stressed out. You know, it wasn't mm-hmm. just that it was a stressful scene with him, but it was because I couldn't sing really. I didn't feel comfortable to sing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I almost mm-hmm. feel like when you're in your natural habitat, you could be naked, for example. You could right. be in mm-hmm. your zone and be naked and go, yeah, that's right, I'm naked. Similarly, if you feel really relaxed to the point where you could do that, you could also stim and feel like, yeah, I'm doing my thing. And like mm-hmm. and that's good. But if you're in an environment where you feel like that would be frowned upon and you're in that environment for too long, it starts to have a really negative effect on your mind. You know? 100%, yeah. You start <clears throat> to feel dysregulated. You start to feel like stressed and... Uh, and you don't, I never used to know why, you know, mm-hmm. and I, this is having huge explanatory power for us, uh, me, my wife and our son, especially. And we're working out how, to, how to deal with him if he's having too much sensory input and stuff. I mean, it's a huge topic, obviously, and I'm totally, by no means yeah. an expert. We are just learning about it. My wife knows uh-huh. a lot more about it than I do, but it's helped me to realize that I am this way. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, and totally. Why have I always been into these crazy things obsessively, <laughs> like ma- like a maniac? Uh-huh. And it's just like, yeah, are you you society wants to kind of, yeah, you could label you just as a nerd, which is quite a convenient way of boxing up a lot of autistic people. Quite frankly, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like people who want to have massive have collections who want to obsess on something who become extremely knowledgeable about a small topic you know to do that takes a certain kind of person you know what i mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um anyway yeah yeah i think the the modular community quite frankly it, it kind of like puts its hand up and says we're all likely part of this <laughs> uh tribe quite frankly well you know? yeah the, the it's i'm i'm really relieved to to hear that it provided so much like um, explanatory power because I actually have a friend who um, late forties, you know, was recently actually was watching a TV show that had um, a character who was on the spectrum. And, you know, my friend started relating to this character a lot and and then that kind of spurred them to, uh, you know, get tested. And, and they (laughs) said that the, the, like the, the the explanatory power of it was just like a you know yeah. an immense sense of relief and I, I the only thing that I can equate this to is um, I was diagnosed dyslexic when I was in third grade, right? Um, but you yep. know this was in the early nineties and I'm and That's through my it. whole life so I was told you know that basically no one said that made me dumb but I had you know because it was a learning disability. I like in hindsight, I took advantage of that. My parents only expected C's. So I did the bare minimum to get C's, which was very easy. Um, I yeah, even pretended right. that I wasn't uh, understanding stuff in this one um, reading class so I could go be with my friends in the like the, the lower level class. Um, yeah, but right. As I, you know, as I've gotten older, I started questioning that 
because you know like it just I, I never felt like the right diagnosis and i i i got yep. tested for adhd and maybe i have both but i you know i you know tested very high on the adhd thing and you know now that i've got a, you know someone i can talk to professionally about that who's given me the right medications like i feel like you know i'm still figuring it out but it was like okay this is why i avoid this type of thing or you know because you you That's right. especially with adhd you, you start so many things and not finish it and you've got a bunch of plates spinning mm -hmm. and then you forget to do you know you forget to pay a bill or you forget to you that's know, called executive function what's that the executive that's yeah. what they call executive function mm -hmm. yeah, yeah which is low on the on the list for for autistic people yeah i mean i mm -hmm. I, I feel like the terms are changing and the times are changing totally, you know yeah. to not that's why i'm saying like i'm a big advocate of not calling autism autism spectrum disorder because yeah. the disorder mm -hmm. is an ableist perspective it's just a different way of having your brain wired and that is it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know totally. and like the world is disabling to people in a wheelchair if there are no ramps exactly. as soon as there are yeah. ramps it's they are no longer disabled mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. it's not you are disabled the world disables you depending mm -hmm. on how it's set up. So if you are very sensitive to loud places and you have to always go to the mall where the lights are crazy bright and everyone, there's loads of noise, you're going to get dysregulated. You're going to freak out. Yeah. You know, so it's knowing like yourself is so important and like trying to like, you know, understand what's going on. Like that can just change your entire life, you know? Totally. Yeah. My, um, so my wife, actually, this has happened since we last talked, but my, um, my wife ended up getting a job as the uh, horticultural manager of the Pacific science center in Seattle, pr um, primarily Amazing. the tropical butterfly house. Yeah. I mean, incredible. She gets Whoa, to work with tropical awesome. plants and butterflies. She gets to see them like come out of a chrysalis and <laughs> yeah. everything. It's oh, pretty it's amazing. Such a good job. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's cool. She, uh, we're just so excited, but just last week they had um they had an event basically they they blocked off a period of time and i think they do this once a month where um they turn down the lights they they turn down everything that makes a lot of noise and it's specifically for for people who want to enjoy a place like this but it is too overstimulating so they create this like love it when and then when you and it's free you don't have to pay for admission love and i just it. think that's such a cool uh. like progressive it idea. is. It is. Well, you are on the West Coast, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, see, I mean, the Pacific Science Center in Seattle. Yeah, you don't yeah. get more progressive than that. Um, no, but I see that just, and and that's the thing. I don't know. I feel like much more people would enjoy that than we're willing to admit. You know what I mean? It's not that we're willing oh, yeah. to admit. Though. I mean, who wouldn't? In, I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah. But anyway, it's definitely. I think that's the thing. I mean, this is a very long winded way of explaining like why we do things in modular. But as you said, you could achieve these things in software. But this morning, I was just saying to my wife, like how happy I was because I sneakily turned the system on because <laughs> I've got a lot of other things to do. And it's like, <laughs> I'll just turn it on because I've got some tweaking to do. Yeah, yeah. You know, I still need to do the mute buttons. I still have like a list of things I want to do. So I turned it on and I just started, like, as always happens, I'll get a tone. I'll be like, oh, that does sound quite good. And, like, the thing is, it's ready to go now, you know? Mm -hmm, I turn mm -hmm. it on and I can just play. And, like, I hit record on the computer and I just thought of this stream of consciousness uh, in the way that I always used to love doing things with my looper. It's very spontaneous and it... And it, I can really get so much tone variation because I've got a voice switcher on the poly and preset so i'll just I'll, and what what's cool about it i'll show you actually hang on basically okay so you're looking at the whole thing here see how i'll i'll, I'll play a sound right you've got the high pass filter oh i'm making mm -hmm. more sustain so oh, this uh -huh. tone is coming out of an xpo just like which is being modulated by an opt so it's sort of on the move a little bit then okay. the low pass filter is next and it has an envelope this is the envelope and you have an envelope amount okay 
So you've just got traditional stuff there. See already, it's quite fun to have the faders. Oh yeah, yeah. The high pass filter is the Duranalog filter eight, and then it goes into the surge variable Q. Okay. And the way the signal goes is it go the oscillator here. Um, yeah, this is selecting one oscillator. This is moving on to the cloud terrarium. Oh wow! And okay. They all go through. Um, they go through these precision adders. So they I'm like. <laughs> I can actually, cool. you know, they all have their own precision adders. Well, the two uh -huh. voices do, but this is just the the mode to select the sound. There are different levels, obviously, and there are also different notes for some reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, Ooh. Yeah, we've got the anal we've got the motion from the filters. That was some good formant stuff involved. there for a second. Yeah, and then I can add like an additional bit of control to the filter envelope from a from this thing. Oh yeah. Maestro. Is that a maestro? That's the, uh, this is the, um, <clears throat> yeah, the maestro, so they can, you know, set it. Oh, very cool. Now I can add, like, reverb to that. Oh, wow. Then at any time I can just record that as a loop, right? Uh huh. Actually, a long loop thing. <laughs> I've got. I've just added this function to it to change the loop length. So this is add. We'll make a loop. Now that's playing from the looper. I switch to the looper control mode, and then I've got my volume for that loop. Okay. Oh, the nice. High low pass of the loop. The reverb sound. Oh, on wow. The loop. So now, when now you switch back, note. so you basically switched what the the faders were controlling with a different preset yes. button, now right? The, now I'm controlling the loop. High low pass filter on loop one. So, if you switched back to so what you I had show. previously, does it save wh where you left off? Yeah. Oh man. That's like great. Also, this is going to reset my patch to no reverb and no filters. Oh, wow. Cool. Actually, it didn't. <laughs> yeah. It kind of didn't work. I can save it again, and it kind of like flashes when I save my preset. Okay. So anyway, that's loop one. I can remove loop one by just pressing the erase loop one button. Okay. And then we're back to our normal control as before. The volume of the voice actually is from this part here. Okay. Um, oh, volume, that's cool. Quite nice. And then I can also record it into, which is off camera right now, but there's a intro loop, loop uh -huh. So I'll record this drone to that now. Now it's playing here. This is why I have a second keyboard. Because let me like, overdub some notes on that. Off the off the Luba, right? But this mm -hmm. another key, this keyboard here now will transpose oh, that. Oh, ice. Okay. Oh, very cool. I can now overdub on top of that. You're a fucking wizard, Jamie. Then that loop wow. is kind of dying away because it's overdubbing. Like uh huh. Yeah, right. But I can erase that. And then, so you've got different ways of looping and different ways of controlling things. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, this, uh, I ought to have. 
a vo- there I ought to have a, a voice input, but for some reason that's that's not happening right now. But uh, I just have to configure it. Mm-hmm. Haven't haven't configured that yet. Uh, but yeah, so because my new mode was to have the basically I also allow myself to um, have this the input from the voice as we saw. Mm-hmm. This is quite a nice feature. Like, um, see, I should be able to recall that. Okay, that was cool. So let's put a decent sound up again. Here's our filter again. We'll take the sample and hold off. Just turn the filter amount. Okay, fine. We've got, we've got our ADSR here with the filter and the envelope. But you see, the nerd sick is playing. And if I if I put it if I put it on that ah. mode, now we're hearing the gate and pitch information from the nerd sick and not the keyboard. Okay. Where are the cables oh. from the droid? Like they're like here. Oh, oh, do they have like an expander that is behind or something, or you can put somewhere yeah, else in the rack? Far away on a, like, a little bit of a, a little bit of an okay. expander. You know? They should they make an expander to, for the outputs. That's you were just I saying think they might. I mean, okay. It's just they're very high quality inputs and outputs on a really high chip, so he's having a hard time with it. Um, but yeah, I think that probably will happen. But here, uh, here comes the here comes the flanger, right? So this is what I was talking about. We are set the the rampage going. Put the memory phone on. Oh wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a nice flanger. Yeah, because it's being controlled by the speed of the rampage here. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. Is that just cycling, or you have that triggered by something? Okay. That's just the 301 doing its thing. See, now, I can't really change that because that's like the nerd seat doing its thing. I can Mm -hmm. record that because it's all clock synced. The nerd Mm -hmm. seat and the loop are actually in sync with one another. So if I put that to a one, two, if I put that to a one bar loop now, hit it. Now we've got it, here's a loop. Of course, the looper has like reverb and shit. <laughs> now I can sort of go to my sequence and I'm on the second, the first oscillator, I can just push up. Oh, wow. Record down another channel. The good thing about Loopy is it will record a longer sequence, but it will still retain the idea of a bar. Okay. Now, now I want my long notes, so I change it to the keyboard mode. You know what I mean? And reset the yeah. settings. that you know yeah that is yeah and, and it's good because you know that's sort of like one level of it then the other level of it is basically hang on a minute make sure something fall off um i can have i have an external input that's the pulsar 23 and then another oh, cool. external input which is like a vocal so really it starts to, I mean, for me, like playing with the synths, it's not really my world. I'm not a keyboard player, but when I, vocal loops is what I do. So mm-hmm. once, 
it, it, the thing about it is we talked about doing it in modular Y. I really like the effects of the modular and like their playability. And that's pretty unique, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously in software, you could do it with VSTs and you could probably get some pretty beautiful, incredible sounds. They are different though. You know what I mean? Yeah. They are different. And mm -hmm. especially, I don't, I think it, it shines when you're using oscillators through the chain because it's sort of meant to be at Euro rack levels and stuff. I mean, to be honest, the gain staging is always a problem because the voice yeah. goes through uh, one of these L1 VCAs. They're good. They have that chips in them and they're good sounding. And then um, that actually then goes into a natural gate straight away afterwards. So if I really want to clamp down that envelope even further, the same gate information that's going in gets sent to the natural gate. I can use the Nerd Seek as a sender, and I've also got the Circadian Rhythms as just the trigger sender. So it will, mm -hmm. it will take CV from the keyboard, but it will do the gates. Okay. And then okay. that will all go through the two VCAs, the one which has the ADSR, and also that goes straight into a natural gate. So if I want to super clamp down on it, it's just all part of like getting a sound quick and trying mm -hmm. to like what I would think of to go, oh, I want it more snappy, way more snappy, snappier yeah. than ADSR. So then I want the, the natural gate, and it's amazing at that. Um, you know, you know, for the gain so, staging issues, because yeah, you know, like I've recently, I've always wanted to put my guitar through modular, um, be, you know, yeah, like yeah. because of the mm -hmm. effects side of it, and um, that was always kind of an issue. Um, and you know, there are a lot of different pedal converters and stuff, but I I feel like um, I just recently got. Uh, but like a couple things from board brain and they have i think three different options for different ways they've got like one that's called the uh exchanger so it's you know mm -hmm. it's either three stereo channels or you know six mono and two of them um go from euro to pedal and then um or three of them or four of them excuse me four of them two of the channels mm -hmm. and then one of them is the the reverse so you know i can get my my summit oh, into uh -huh. my modular really nicely. And then they've got the injector, which is like a quarter inch input. Um, it's got yeah. effects and, you know, envelope follower gate generator with a guitar preamp on it. And then they have one that's just for effect sending to non-modular gear. I forgot what that one's called, but really high quality stuff. Um, and yeah. finding that has been really like, those have been my launching points to really yeah. start doing this. Um, yeah, so it's really interesting. I mean, I just started experimenting with that the other day. Yeah, I've been through that. I've got a Bafaco instrument input, and I've got the N2WS, like, you know, balanced I.O. with 8 in and 8 out, which is always – I don't love it, and I don't love the Bafaco in certain ways either. So, yeah, I I find that I – but I actually don't think it's either of their faults. I just feel right. like when those signals come in, they are just more – especially a vocal. It's just a different kind of energy. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's quite intermittent energy. It's not – like an oscillator is really blazing when it's on. Mm -hmm. You know, its intensity is fierce, uh, e even – after it's been enveloped, you know, there's a lot of intensity to that signal. It's a bit different to a vocal or an instrument that has a lot of dynamic range. Mm -hmm. And they're just yeah. the inherent dynamic range of the signal just like reveals the noisiness and fuzziness of Eurorack, which is unfortunately a given. And in this mm -hmm. system, for example, if I put a heavy compressor at the end of the chain, which it can kind of frankly do with at times because it gets a little quiet, um, then I feel the noise floor brings up all of the clocking noise from the mimeophone and like, and the ER301. And also I'm going through an ECR plus, you know, the, um, the tasty chips, uh, convolution reverb Okay. at the end of the chain, just and on, I just have a wet dry blend that I will just add sometimes. Uh, mm. and just there's, there's noise floor. And I, I thought actually the only thing that could maybe help is, um, the Sound Machines, that company that make the Stolper Beats, they also make this kind of send and return little module. It looks like about 6 HP or 8 HP or something. I think that could be interesting because it's sort of like, you could, it's like a malt that has a mix on it. So okay. like you mm -hmm. can you can use it to do like wet and dry sends. I'm doing wet and dry sending on this. That's how I get the Luba like 
and the and the instrument level separated. Okay. So I can actually play into the loop looper, the loop, the, you know, the instro one without hearing the dry voice at all because I can take the, I basically molt the signal. It's really complicated signal routing. You know, that's what you end up getting into, isn't it? It's like to yeah. switch the oscillators. It's like they basically go into their own VCA bank and then like the level from the preset selects which one goes out to the mix of that VCA to go on to the next stage, which is the mm -hmm. filtering stage. Right, and then from right. the filtering stage, no, the, you know, the amplitude envelope and no, the filtering's first and then it goes into the amplitude envelope. And then from the amplitude envelope, it goes into a split, sends it onto the effects and it also goes into the looper. Do you have like, like a notepad so that you have to use to keep track of the signal chain or is it just uh, like i ought to i think i, I think <laughs> I, the thing is i'm moving studio so this how, whole modular has to come down i have to unplug oh. and take everything out mm -hmm. which is fine but yeah it will be a pain to lose this patch but um well i think i'm just gonna really really write it down this time yeah and, and try and document it i think like raymond scott was really good at that he he would, and I mean, obviously Ben Divkid, he does these amazing PDS with his stuff. Um, and hats off to him. That's so much work. But I think if you've got a system that works, it can really, only if you're doing a patch like this, I want to really explore this. Every night I kind of just cruise on it for a couple of hours and just mm -hmm. hit record. And there's some real lovely moments just because I just start to, What's nice about it is even like doing something like that, what we're, we're, we're hearing is like just have a little sequence that is consistent from something like the NerdSeq. And, uh, you know, it kind of limits how complex the thing becomes. Mm -hmm. It sort of just becomes like a little arpeggiated phrase. Obviously, just having a one bar phrase like that isn't quite as magic as maybe having a four bar one. But, you know, once you set up like the parameters of the jam, you can kind of then stretch out with the freedom this system allows and just kind of play with it and the tone colors. And there's so much mm -hmm. tone color that comes from the different shaping possibilities. And having the circadian rhythms has been amazing too. Having something that's just sending out rhythmic triggers that are in sync and everything goes into a QCD so I can vary the ratio relative to the master clock downstream mm -hmm. to the circadian, to the nerd seek, to the maestro, um, you know, it's sort of like just, and yeah, it all comes from the Acme. So the, actually it's all in sync with Ableton as well, because the Acme is, is the clock boss. And so overdubbing has been really good. Overdubbing nice. is amazing. Okay. So you can kind of like hit record into the, do one pass and like rewind and then do another pass mm -hmm. and it's all locked in. And like, you know, it's been, it's suddenly becoming like the thing I've been wanting in modular for ages, like this sketch pad like uh -huh. a super quick way of just kind of going that tone sounds really good and like even on that like i was showing like how you can store a preset which is basically the reset button effectively but you can also store presets and like have like like held states of the mimeophone where it's like just ringing in a crazy like mm -hmm. and you like that yeah. note and you can save it and always come back to exactly that which that is, is a lot yeah. of compli complicated thing with the flame cc to cv that's 16 plus the eight you've got 24 variables essentially and there's four gate signals so yeah there's like you know it's 28 variables plus the midi and then the midi is sending all kinds of stuff to the looper and we could potentially be sending stuff to the to the computer to trigger like samplers and you know you just you can make it like the hub that i wanted it to be but i'm basically mm -hmm. waiting for my new studio which is going to have the zale am1 which is going to have like six CV channels. And then I'll be able to do all this stuff, like to clean up the signal path on this, for example, to get rid of all that clock noise I was talking about. Like what I'd end up doing is like taking the signal and basically try to make it so that you can kind of emulate just the path of the VCA, I mean, uh, the VCO going straight to the output. Like, you know, oh, every VCA mm -hmm. that's in the path of that is going to change the signal tone a little bit. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, mm -hmm. depending on what that VCA is doing, you know, if it's not mm -hmm. really summing and it's, it's kind of passing it, really it oughtn't to be doing too much, you know, um, you obviously. And so I, I was thinking like, yeah, you get a bunch of these wet dry boxes and then before a, each of the stereo effects, you basically, when the wet and dry fader is down on my fader, then effectively be passing the signal 
completely bypassing that effects unit. Right. So it won't be going yeah. through it in a in a off position. The effect will always be 100% wet, and you'll actually just push into it. So effectively, that's the real only way I think to really clean it up, and it's such a pain in the ass to do. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, and that's just I to mean, clean up the signal. It's like that's when it gets ridiculous. But hey, yeah, my my fix for for that kind of thing is is again much more uh, cavemanish than yours. But I basically have gotten in the habit of um, just as many. You know, I've I can do eight tracks here, so I try to do all the dry and all the you know st- even the you know the, t- the stereo everything's separate because if there's you know mm-hmm. a little nice. bit of a frequency here then i can d- you right. know i'm not dump- ducking the whole thing and because mixing stereo stuff when you have a full big patch in modular i mean you really have to get right. it sounding where you want it before you commit it to tape or whatever that's um, interesting that's interesting the good thing about I mean, this um yeah. loopy thing which i discovered which has been great um because the loopy runs on the ios they have got a version for you know mac os and stuff now or just you know desktop but this current configuration the output of loopy goes into a lynx aurora an old one a silver aurora lynx with the USB card, which makes it class compliant. So I've got 16 ins and 16 outs into loop. Oh, wow. Oh, so wow. So I haven't configured it that way, but all of the loops that you, the, all those four loops could have their own stereo pairs. So you'd have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine and 10, yeah. say, on a console coming into a sound card. So each of the loops would be on a separate channel but you could still monitor it whilst you're jamming out of a mixing desk. But you do need a desk for that, or at least mm. a sound card, a way of monitoring in the computer. But hey, it's all doable. And like I said, I have I have a thought of that, but I tend to be of the opinion now with this setup, for example, like I will do something like that and just kind of go, okay, well, I was doing that little bass motion and it was a little bit lacking. So I need to overdub a heavier bass doing that line and i might go mm-hmm. into contact and bring out like a a string instrument like this really high res and just sort of double my intentions and just kind mm-hmm. of go what was i trying to do let me like augment it with like flutes and like some other sounds so you know and like basically like use that first pass as my intention pass and mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. and trust the fact that i was feeling it and flowing and like, mm-hmm. and like, just use that and not worry about was it lacking something. If it is, then you can do EQ cuts on the two track. You can, I've been doing these really cool things in Ableton where I like just put, you know, Fab Filter Pro Q3s and just do an EQ band that's just the side band. And then just mm-hmm. sort of like put an LFO on that in Ableton and just move the frequency in the side band around. Oh, but like nice. you can you can automate the EQs, you know, after you've done yeah. the two track bounce, and like yeah. you know, you can split the signal into multiple bands, and like you could have like a template for that, so that you could go, yeah, sure, I'm gonna have some issues with this, but then I'll I'll put the two track into this kind of like fixer, and then I can isolate my parts. And also another thing I've been really into is like run the entire thing into Melodyne afterwards, okay, and then like then overlay. A- other chordal intentions on top okay and make it conform to the scale of other things you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that is mm-hmm. really beautiful i feel like that's an avenue to really like find like entirely new tones one of the things that frustrates me about working with traditional oscillators in a you know say a traditional bookler surge or you know whatever coast you're dealing with you're still dealing with oscillators and you're still dealing with that core sound, which is very 70s, you know, or or 60s, 70s. So it's like how to modernize that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Totally. And I think it comes from effects, it comes from process, and it comes from, like one of the things that's cool about this is once it comes into Loopy, Loopy has like, it has iOS effects from FabFilter, so you can put satin on, you can have, I've got like the, the EQs are all the Volcano 3, and uh, they sound really good and like you can put a limiter on the master bus and it's just it is a little um daw in itself loopy yeah yeah and can host all these ios like basically all these um these plugins so it's been a real crazy journey learning droid learning loopy uh learning a little bit about nerdsec although i'm definitely not very good at it or circadian i've just got that 
Mm -hmm. And yeah, man, you know, but then of course, by doing this, my whole modular rig is now consumed with the task of pulling off this patch, right? Right. If I want to do like drums, which I do want to do, I, I, I thought to myself, well, look, this whole thing is in sync. I can send a clock out and Circadian can do an entire drum part and basically mm -hmm. do a rhythm box. And uh, my new thing with the rhythm boxes is that voltage controlled equalizer though. So like the entire mix of the drums would go into that L1 resonant EQ. Mm -hmm. So it would kind of mm -hmm. give it this kind of like weird chintzy kind of filtered tone. <laughs> it would yeah, sort of take yeah. it down a notch. So it felt a bit more like an old rhythm box because I don't like the sound of say like a BIA or something like just blazing dry out of a thing. First of all, it's been mm -hmm. used way too much, I think. And like, you know, you just doesn't feel like yours almost. So like yeah. something that's going to give the character that is yours. Yeah. And then, totally. you know, yeah. Anyway, yeah.
All right, so we are like at an hour. I think this might be the fastest one of these has gone by because I feel like we just started. Like I, I have, I have True. so much other stuff I want to talk to you about, but I feel like um, I can't take all of your time. So, just one Wild final, qu- one final question before the Patreon bonus section regarding this patch. Then I, I, I don't know if me and you were chatting about this online or if I heard it on uh, hanging out with audio files, but. You're you have recently started working on an album or or have finished an album uh, or... yeah ah oh, yeah yeah yes there is uh <laughs> man and this is not it you know but this is well that's me what I was gonna ask yeah. is this patch for one track or is this patch something no. you're trying to build to do an entire performance with or an entire set of songs with or that's interesting I I, I think one thing's for sure I could imagine. Uh, cutting down this patch because the midi power of droid is so strong like Mm -hmm. in a weird way that actually makes it the most powerful because you can really interface with the laptop or the ipad in pretty you know really powerful ways Uh, and then you don't need that many cables obviously because all of it is happening out of a midi cable so th- if I were to take this in a smaller performance case or something, I would have less faders, obviously, and um, just probably lean more on the MIDI side of it. And so then it just becomes like MIDI fader box, but a really mm-hmm. nice one, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, with yeah. like recallability and that th- that is like your own and not quite the same as having like a Behringer or something. Mm-hmm. It just would just, I don't know, it just feels more special. But uh, and it does also, of course, have CV ready to go, and it can take inputs and transform the inputs. So mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah, there's so many other patches I want to make with it. Um, that's upsetting. So basically, what I probably need to think about doing is, yeah, I've been doing all these jams for the whole of January, pretty much. Once I've got this thing off the ground, I start just pressing record (laughs) Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. i thought to myself well what i might do is set up a little record label like like tower records but howard records hanging out with audio files records oh nice yeah yeah and then just have have an outlet for this stuff i do because Mm -hmm. at the moment i just have a folder on my computer called search for sound and it's like i populate it with my modular stuff and I remember interviewing Alessandro Cortini and he and I said to him, Oh, you must have loads of unreleased stuff. And he goes, No, I release it all. Yeah. So I was like, Oh. And then I'm like, Well, I should probably release it all, you know, just because I get super into it. And I'm like, This is my life candle burning. This is how I'm spending my life on this planet, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is what I'm doing with my energy, and I'm giving it all my energy. So obviously. I care about it. And when you care about your art, isn't that when you put it together and release it? I mean, of course, there can be too much. I'm not going to say I'm just going to offload arbitrary Mm -hmm. night's work (laughs) and just go, that's Mm -hmm. an album. It's still going to be filtered and considered, but maybe less so than my usual process that is like exhaustive and like perfectionist and, you know, Mm -hmm. yeah, can really like kill the vibe. Yeah, I mean, that's a thought I had the other day. And I thought, if I could do that, I would be really happy because I I, I am working on a more traditional album and it's it's been a massive labor of love. 
Mm-hmm. And I always talk about it on the pod like I'm going to work on it, but I do get distracted by <laughs> all of this, I suppose. Yeah. yeah and it, but totally. then I realize it's not really a distraction. It's a passion, you mm-hmm. know, and it's like where I want to be mm-hmm. yeah. right now. But the, the fact is I do or I ought to, and I want to, let's not make it immoral here. I also will and want to finish this album and like it's been cool actually just having massive amounts of space between doing stuff like the other day i came across a mix that i was working on for days and thought oh i did a good job but wow i missed this this and this and i wouldn't have noticed it had i not had that space and it is a bit ridiculous yeah Yeah, it's taken Mm -hmm. me a long time i started recording the album like over two years ago you know (laughs) <laughs> you know so but i interviewed yeah. this guy rustin man on the podcast and he took 15 years to make an album so it's still within the well so within the brackets of acceptability i think this this stuff that i'm working on right now like i sent you those videos um yeah great you know, the just just demo mm-hmm. just kind of figuring stuff out but you know this this it's it's more of a feeling of what I want to express and it's not even like a specific thing. It's just more like a yeah. vibe or a feeling. And I've had that since yes. before modular and I still haven't made that <laughs> record yet, but I feel like right. that track that I sent you, I was like, this is my starting point. Cause this is like, perfect. I have captured something. Now I just need to make the perfect patch to play it through and find the yeah. f- perfect field recording area to nice. do it and then nail a perfect take while cool stuff happens around me i've been i've recorded <laughs> probably a hundred takes of this track wow. on my front porch with just my guitar and a field recorder because um so much interesting stuff happens around me That's but i so need cool. that yeah. i need that interesting stuff to happen at the right parts and i need to play this nine minute song with a perfect take of course i could edit it all together but there's something that i want to do it all in one and i don't i mean it's it's a huge waste of time probably but i don't know why that's important to me um i love it man that's your passion and that that's that's what it's all about i mean you know yeah like we've said already we could do this way easier inside a computer you know quite frankly there are much easier ways to do this but when we Mm -hmm. find that sweet spot and we are heading for this thing like, and you do create the instrument. There is a certain beauty and satisfaction from that. I love making these instruments when they yeah, all work together 100%. and you feel like, mm-hmm. oh man, like I had this thing in my head and now it exists. One thing that I was mm-hmm. going to say, like just an aside, like, and I'll make it quick because I know we're, we're wrapping up. But um, one thing that always shocks me with these kind of things, you set up a series of parameters. I suppose this is stands to reason in a way, but it always is surprising to me. The instrument that I've made, it has a real character. Like all the recordings mm-hmm. I've made with it kind of feel like they all belong together because it's obviously it's the same core components, but it's really interesting what that character is. You know, the mm-hmm. character is also the noise floor. The character is also like the kind of kind of distortion that it has. The and ki- it's like you know, the, the sum kind of, of your yeah, decision making some of the process. Parts. Yeah. Like, and yeah. what, like what's going on. So like, it's your modular voice, you know, that's what I really yeah. like. It's like, that's right. My, my modular music doesn't sound like my electronic music pre-modular, <laughs> but I feel yeah. like both of them sound like Tim either doing non-modular yeah. electronic or vice versa. So, um, Absolutely. yeah. And I think that's Absolutely. really special. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> one last thing, just, this is a All quick, right. this is just a quick one, but, um, I believe you and I started our podcasts within months of each other. So have you hit the, I think so. so. If I remember it, have you hit five years? I have. Officially. Okay. Okay. Right on. Congrats. This year. Absolutely. Uh, That's a good question. Yeah. I, uh, Oh, I could have, I should know, but I don't know if I can remember. Let me see. I think (laughs) I've got my pods here. The episode, let me see. Episode one, Patrick Carney. It was done. Yeah, when was it recorded? 2017, July. Okay. So I started recording in 2017, no, October, but then didn't yep. release until March of 18. So I'm I'm a month and a half away from yeah. my five year. Amazing. You've done a lot more episodes than me. <laughs> Hats off to you, man. <laughs> but, I mean, I well, so you- screwed myself <laughs> doing the nitties because the nitties end up taking me sometimes yeah. over a week. Like well, just to I conceive of, I've just recently like so I'm doing video now, um, 
you know, so video nice. versions of the of the demos and stuff. And it's just adding that has been I, I understand what you're saying now with the nitty. Like when I'm trying yeah. to set up a patch or something for just like a little video portion of oh, the intro of the episode, that takes so longer than anything else. Yeah, it's oh, insane God. how long uh, it it's, takes. Uh, it's ridiculous. Like it's sometimes ridiculous. I'll, yeah, because it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a whole day. I'll just go like oh, yeah. you know, cause you know, because I want it to be I'm one, I'm 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 demoing these things for people who, you know, who it's their mm -hmm. business. Right. So I want to do it justice, right? That's so, it. Yeah. You know, I want to make sure it's good. So, you know, next thing I know, my wife's home from work and she's like, You're still working? And I'm like, I but I haven't really done anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's hard to explain, isn't it? I mean, but I think anyone who's in this world I know, quite frankly, a lot of these creative endeavors, things take so much longer than you'd imagine. Oh, yeah. Totally. Uh, and, you know, yeah, it's all good, man. You know, it's just uh, mm -hmm. if you're going to have standards and high standards, then, uh, you know, it takes time. But there's a beautiful satisfaction from doing a job well, isn't there? When you no, do do definitely. it and you put it out, you go, oh, that was actually really good. And, and I, I, I think try to get to that with a pod when I'm like, I put it out and I go, I really couldn't have made that much better. Mm -hmm. And like, and I was like, well, that's awesome. Cause now I've got a hundred of those where I feel the same thing. Yeah. Like, and like, I feel and that, that way about good. a few. Yeah. The last few episodes since I've, I've switched to video and of course, just having the, the, the thrill of, of John and Sam hanging out here. Oh um, man. Yeah. So, so cool. I think, you know, it's just, you need those recharges. Um, well, so yeah. What do you want to scream from the modular mountaintops before we get into this, uh, this Patreon bonus thing? If you have time for that, like 10 minutes, maybe. What do you mean? What do I, I want keep, to scream from the mountaintops? Uh, I don't know. Is there any, I guess, what do you want to promote? Do you have anything to promote? Oh. Do you have any proclamations, advice? Oh, I see. Uh, I see. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, it's a tricky one, isn't it? It's, um, I like when people I think stop and think about it. Yeah, I think I'm just <laughs> trying to work out, like, uh, I think uh, what I've been proud of with this patch is that I really stopped to ask myself, what do I like to do? You know, how do mm -hmm. I like to express myself? I mean, in my case, it's a bit it's simpler because I've had a long history of looping and I know that I'm really capable of expressing my ideas with a looper so i was like i need a looper but i need my own looper that's a bit different to any looper that i've had before mm -hmm. and i and i think just setting down with a very sort of like uh yeah with a fixed idea in mind and like trusting myself in that way where i was like that would be really good you should really do that and then following through on it that felt mm -hmm. really good so yeah. I would say, like, try to stop don't, before you patch and just kind of go, what is it that, you know, how can I really express myself? You know, like, how, what is the, the thing that I'm good at in a way? Like with me, like interacting with loopers, I, I can just do it because I've practiced it a lot. Some people are amazing keyboard players. So working out the most expressive way to use that interface ought to mm -hmm. be, well, could be a good thing to prioritize, you know? And That's like, so kind funny. Of, I don't That's know, just what I'm looking doing at your right strengths. Now. Yeah. Because bring it, you know, and trust I'm it, definitely it be better so at guitar. Good if you do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not and, a great yeah, modular I mean, synthesis, to be honest. I mean, I same, think I'm, same. I think I'm okay. Um, but Absolutely I think I have same. a good ear for finding cool stuff and I'm yeah. very proficient on guitar decent on keys so i'm getting way more into like okay i'm gonna play yeah. the music i want but i'm gonna <laughs> control it with this stuff you know like yeah absolutely so. and the unperson thing on youtube has been something i've really enjoyed just because he chose to me like what is so cool about modular in a in a, in a really simple way it's basically he's using effects most of the time Mm -hmm. He's just using effects to like sculpt his tone and it's really powerful and you get such a I'm huge variety that from that. It's really, really worth a watch. He's, he's got a great presentation style too, really mellow and unpretentious. He's just really mm -hmm. good at what he does. The music yeah. is, is really ace and like, uh, you know, yeah, no hats off to the, to, to yourself and obviously all the community, Div Kid, Milo Melodies, Red Means Recording, like all the crew, Andrew Wang and like 
everyone mm-hmm. making their stuff. It's always exciting to to see what everyone's up to. And, you know, um, yeah, man. I just I just feel like, yeah, taking a second to sort of focus on the patch before just patching, maybe that's it. Maybe mm-hmm. that's the thing. <laughs> I think it's good advice. Yeah. It's not great advice, is it? It's pretty simple. But at the yeah. same time, I think, you know, once you're you know, sometimes that moment with the with the with textbook, that's what I end up doing. Like you're asking if I take notes. I take so many notes. I mean, like mm. I've got like books upon books of just uh-huh. notes for this patch, notes to how I learnt droid, learns to how I break down everything. Taking the big task. This is what I'd recommend. Take the big task, the big dream. And then go, okay, how is it made? And what are the parts that I can do now? And what parts do I need to learn about? And then kind of go, right, I need to learn droid if I'm going to do this thing. So, okay, I need to learn the rudiments of droid then. I'm going to have to watch videos. I'm going to have to study it. I'm going to have to put the hours in. Do that, but don't lose focus on why you were doing it in the first place. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is a little bit like executive functioning overview stuff of just kind of managing the dream. And like, mm-hmm, you know, totally. you get distracted along the way and you probably might change your plan along the way. But I think having a way to break down a big idea into small parts is like key to like I'm really 100% getting it done. So that's another reason I got these, I think, and it has to do with, you know, the ADD thing is this little yep. setup of the pods in my Strega. Nice. This yep. is my guitar rig. This is my guitar rig. Awesome. Um, yeah. This is that's my powerful. drum rig. And then that yep, is yep. just everything else, you know, if I need a little boost from anything Yeah, else. that's mm-hmm. headspace stuff, isn't it? It's just kind mm-hmm. of like, I totally. agree. That's one of the big things we're having. The big case is very complicated, even though I mm-hmm. essentially have done that in little islands. But it's just yeah. a very intense kind of determination because you're looking at this really intense object and your brain is like, oh, my God, this thing is overwhelming. Yeah. You're like, mm-hmm. nope. That's why I like the faders, you see. Because that becomes like the only thing I need to concentrate on. I don't need to concentrate right. on the rest. Yes. I just yeah, like control express forge. myself with the faders. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, this is how I'm interfacing with this thing. And yeah. like it's a, it, it, and that really helped me just sort of like an interface that feels good because a lot of the faders and stuff in Eurorack, they feel really bad, you know? They're just mm-hmm. like these flimsy little spindly things. Or just They're not yeah. a good way to express yourself. That's not mm-hmm. acceptable as far as I'm concerned. That's, yeah. you know, that's why other synths excel and why Eurorack can sometimes fail it's because the configuration and the format, it, it, people cheap out on the, on the pots or they try to fit more functionality in a small space. And it's just the user experience suffers as a result so much that it's almost yeah. like it kind of kills it for me. Mm-hmm. So like yeah. I end up thinking that I don't like that. I used to <laughs> love Tim Exile's thing with the faders. It feels amazing to me. And like, you know, one thing I'll say, like sending frequencies and stuff from the fader directly in Droid, you have to be careful because um, you get this kind of like um, zippy sound from the digital to analog conversion. Mm. Um, but, but, you, but he has like these high, he has these filters in, in, in the droid itself, which you can use and like it kind of smooths it all out. So I've had to learn all kinds of weird stuff about the way that it actually works. Um, <laughs> but now, now it works, you know? Yeah. So anyway, but there you go. Nice. Horribly long and long winded rambling answer. Well, You're thank welcome. you so much for your time. It's always a pleasure to get to chat in person. Um, Absolutely, man. Yeah, it's funny since Let's we've chatted, next what, you know. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to make it a yearly thing. <laughs> All right. All right, that's our episode. Thank you so much for coming back to Podular Modcast. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you're taking uh, your Pod Mod episodes in on YouTube. Um, thank you again to Novation. Uh, the Summit is a beast of a synth, and I'm absolutely loving it. Thank you to Patchworks for their continued support. Please visit them online at patchworks.com. That's patchworks.com. And also thank you to Forum Mess for their support of the show. I cannot recommend uh the the shaped dual envelope vca high enough it's one of my favorite modules um probably it's probably one of my favorite modules that i've had in the last two years it's just it's opening up a lot of new ideas for how to uh, 
make interesting things happen in my patches. Uh, what else? If you would like to support the show on Patreon, let's get to 200 for real this time. I've been saying that for two years, but let's actually get to 200 and you could possibly find yourself in a position where I pass on some modules, or patch cables, or all of the above, or cassettes, or stickers. Um, and then, yeah, I want to load some of my demo stuff up from the show as sample packs. Um, so yeah, that's patreon.com forward slash modular modcast. Thank you again to Jamie Liddell for coming on the show. Um, go check out his podcast, Hanging Out with Audio Files. I love that show. Um, yeah, and this week's secret word is going to be gilded cage. I just read it off of a piece of art. Gilded cage. Until next week.